Exalt, let them exalt, the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud, our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad, as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, Arrayed with the lightning of his glory, let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Therefore, dearest friends, standing in the awesome glory of this holy life, Invoke with me, I ask you, the mercy of God Almighty, that he who has been pleased to number me, though unworthy among the Levites, may pour into me his light unshadowed, that I may sing this candle's perfect praises. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, 
and made them pass dry short through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been a gain had we not been redeemed. Oh, oh, oh wonder of your humble care for us. O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave. You gave her away, your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, 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 happy fools that earn so great, so glorious a redeemer. Oh, 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 truly blessed night, worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day, dazzling is the night for me, and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honour, a fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees, to build a torch so precious. Oh, oh, oh truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth, and divine to the human. Therefore, O Lord, we pray that this candle, hallowed to the honour of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance, and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star. 
the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God, in times past, saved his people, and in these, the last days, has sent us his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. So please be seated now as we listen to the first reading. Of our vigil. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God said, Let us make man in our own image, in the likeness of ourselves, and let them be masters of the fish of the sea, the birds of heaven, the cattle all the wild beasts and all the reptiles that crawl upon the earth. God created man in the image of himself. In the image of God he created him, male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying to them, Be fruitful, multiply, Fill the earth and conquer it. Be masters of the fish of the sea, the birds of heaven, and all living animals on the earth. God said, See, I give you all the seed-bearing plants that are upon the whole earth, and all the trees with seed-bearing fruit. This shall be your food. To all wild beasts, all birds of heaven, and all living reptiles on the earth, I give all the foliage of plants for food. And so it was. God saw all he had made, and indeed, it was very good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, my soul. Lord God, how great you are, clothed in majesty and glory, Wrapped in light as in robe. Response Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. You founded the earth on its base to stand firm from age to age. You wrapped it with the ocean like a cloak. The waters stood higher than the mountains. Response Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. You make springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow in between the hills. On their banks dwell the birds of heaven. From the branches they sing their song. Response. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. From your dwelling you water the hills. Earth drinks its fill of your gift. You make the grass grow for the cattle 
and the plants to serve man's needs. Response, send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your riches. Bless the Lord, my soul. Response, send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Let us stand and pray. O God, who wonderfully created human nature, and still more wonderfully redeemed it, grant us, we pray, to set our minds against the enticements of sin, that we may merit to attain eternal joys, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And please be seated now for our second reading. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me so? Tell the sons of Israel to march on. For yourself, raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and part it for the sons of Israel to walk through the sea on dry ground. I, for my part, will make the heart of the Egyptians so stubborn that they will follow them. So shall I win myself glory at the expense of Pharaoh, of all his army, his chariots, his horsemen. And when I have won glory for myself at the expense of Pharaoh and his chariots and his army, the Egyptians will learn that I am the Lord. Then the angel of the Lord, who marched at the front of the army of Israel, changed station and moved to their rear. The pillar of cloud changed station from the front to the rear of them and remained there. It came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. The cloud was dark, and the night passed without the armies drawing any closer the whole night long. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove back the sea with a strong easterly wind all night, and he made dry land of the sea. The waters parted, and the sons of Israel went on dry ground right into the sea, walls of water to the right and to the left of them. The Egyptians gave chase. After them they went right into the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots and his horsemen. In the morning watch, the Lord looked down on the army of the Egyptians from the pillar of fire and of cloud, and threw the army into confusion. He so clogged their chariot wheels that they could scarcely make headway. Let us flee from the Israelites, the Egyptians cried. The Lord is fighting for them against the Egyptians. Stretch out your hand over the sea, the Lord said to Moses that the waters may flow back on the Egyptians and their chariots and their horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and as day broke, the sea returned to its bed. The fleeing Egyptians marched right into it and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the very middle of the sea. The returning waters overwhelmed the chariots and the horsemen of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them was left. But the sons of Israel had marched through the sea on dry ground, 
waters of walls of water to the right and to the left of them. That day, the Lord had rescued Israel from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. Israel witnessed the great act that the Lord had performed against the Egyptians, and the people venerated the Lord. They put their faith in the Lord and in Moses, his servant. It was then that Moses and the sons of Israel sang this song in honour of the Lord. The response is, I will sing to the Lord, glorious his triumph. I will sing to the Lord, glorious his triumph. I will sing to the Lord, glorious his triumph. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength, my song, my salvation. This is my God, and I extol him. My Father's God, and I give him praise. Response, I will sing to the Lord, glorious his triumph. The Lord is a warrior, the Lord is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh he hurled into the sea. The flower of his army is drowned in the sea. The deeps hide them, they sank like a stone. Response, I will sing to the Lord, glorious his triumph. Your right hand, Lord, Glorious in its power, your right hand, Lord, has shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your glory, you crushed the foe. Response, I will sing to the Lord, glorious his triumph. You will lead your people and plant them on your mountain, the place, O Lord, where you have made your home, the sanctuary, Lord, which your hands have made. The Lord will reign for ever and ever. Response, I will sing to the Lord, glorious his triumph. Let us stand and pray. O God, who by the light of the New Testament have unlocked the meaning of wonders worked in former times, so that the Red Sea prefigures the sacred font and the nation delivered from slavery foreshadows the Christian people. Grant, we pray, that all nations, obtaining the privilege of Israel by merit of faith, may be reborn by partaking of your Spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, O oh, come to the water, all you who are thirsty. Though you have no money, come. Buy corn without money and eat, and at no cost, wine and milk. Why spend money on what is not bread? your wages on what fails to satisfy. Listen, listen to me, and you will have good things to eat and rich food to enjoy. Pay attention, come to me, listen, and your soul will live. With you, I will make an everlasting covenant out of the favours promised to David. See, I have made of you a witness to the peoples, a leader and a master of the nations. See, you will summon a nation you never knew. Those unknown will come hurrying to you for the sake of the Lord your God, of the Holy One of Israel, who will glorify you. Seek the Lord 
while he is still to be found. Call to him while he is still near. Let the wicked man abandon his way, the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn back to the Lord, who will take pity on him, to our God, who is rich in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways not your ways. It is the Lord who speaks. Yes, the heavens are as high above earth as my ways are above your ways. My thoughts above your thoughts. Yes, as the rain and the snow come down from the heavens and do not return without watering the earth, making it yield and giving growth to provide seed for the sower and bread for the eating, so the word that goes from my mouth does not return to me empty without carrying out my will and succeeding in what it was sent to do. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The response is, with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Truly God is my salvation. I trust, I shall not fear. For the Lord is my strength, my song. He became my saviour. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Response. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord. Give praise to his name. Make his mighty deeds known to the peoples. Declare the greatness of his name. Response. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Sing a psalm to the Lord, for he has done glorious deeds. Make them known to all the earth, people of Zion. Sing and shout for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Response, with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Let us stand and pray. Almighty ever living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only in the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. say together, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. 
we may render you undivided service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now as we listen to the Epistle reading for the Mass. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. When we were baptised in Christ Jesus, we were baptised in his death. In other words, when we were baptised, we went into the tomb with him and joined him in death, so that, as Christ was raised from the dead by the Father's glory, we too might live a new life. If, in union with Christ, we have imitated his death, we shall also imitate him in his resurrection. We must realise that our former selves have been crucified with him to destroy this sinful body and to free us from the slavery of sin. When a man dies, of course, he has finished with sin. But we believe that having died with Christ, we shall return to life with him. Christ, as we know, having been raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no power over him anymore. When he died, he died once for all, to sin, so his life now is life with God, and in that way you too must consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My brothers and sisters, I bring you great tidings, the Easter Alleluia, which I will sing three times, but without repeating. has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.
the Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. After the Sabbath, and towards dawn on the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala and the other Mary went to visit the sepulchre. And all at once there was a violent earthquake, for the angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled away the stone and sat on it. His face was like lightning, his robe white as snow. The guards were so shaken, so frightened of him, that they were like dead men. But the angel spoke, and he said to the women, There is no need for you to be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said he would. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead, and now he is going before you to Galilee. It is there you will see him. Now I have told you. Filled with awe and great joy, the women came quickly away from the tomb and ran to tell the disciples. And there, coming to meet them, was Jesus. Greetings, he said. And the women came up to him and, falling down before him, clasped his feet. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers that they must leave for Galilee. They will see me there. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we gather together this evening for the Easter Vigil on this Holy Saturday. It is in actual fact the strangest day of the Church's year, even in times of normality. The church buildings are closed. There are no masses today, no services until the Easter Vigil, except of course traditional devotions like the blessing of Easter food, so popular in much of Central Europe. And even though Angela and I are kept busy preparing the church for this vigil, it is in many ways a long day of monotonous emptiness. And we all know why. Jesus is dead. We have accompanied him on his last painful journey, step by step. We have seen the scourges, the crown of thorns, the nails, the cross. And now he lies cold in a borrowed tomb. And the greatest story ever told seems to have ended in blood and tragedy. The stone that has been rolled to seal off the tomb seems, as one person put it, like a gigantic full stop. Seemingly, Jesus of Nazareth is put on that long list of lost causes, of popular fans, of five-minute celebrities. Perhaps one day he will be rediscovered by a historian, historian searching through ancient records, but for now he is just a memory in the minds of his mother and his disciples. A treasured memory, but one that will fade as the years go by. At least that's what his disciples thought on Holy Saturday. But as we all know, and as we've just heard in the Gospel, the death of Jesus was not that definitive full stop. Every Holy Saturday I can hardly wait for the evening to come, because strangely it is only in the darkness of the night that we find the light. In the midst of our despair comes hope. Into our sorrow comes joy. Into our emptiness, fullness. The light of the Easter candle transforms us and shows us the way ahead. This year we celebrate Easter as never before. Our alleluias may sound a little muted, our hearts burdened, 
our ceremonies limited. Even our church doors are shut, seemingly sealed, just like the tomb of Christ. But we know that the Spirit is alive, that the emptiness is pregnant with possibilities, that the darkness contains promise. None of us knows what the next few weeks will look like, but let us try to live them with the quiet confidence and hope that the resurrection gives us on this holy night. As we sing in the Exalted, that great hymn at the very beginning of the Mass, which I sing, let this holy building shake with joy, even though it's empty, and let that joy spread by means of the Wi-Fi and God's grace to all your homes and families, because Christ is not here, he is risen, hallelujah. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observances is concluded, let us renew the promises of our holy baptism in place of our creed. It was in baptism that we once renounced Satan and his works, and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, wherever you are, to please stand as we renew our baptism promises. And as you know, the response to each of these statements is, I do. So, my brothers and sisters, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil? so that sin may have no mastery over you. I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, Keep us by his grace, in Christ Jesus our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. On this night, made holy by Christ's rising from the dead, let us bring all our intercessions to God. We pray for the whole church that the victory of Jesus Christ over sin and death may be preached with joy, and that all wounds existing within our community are healed. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously gracious. hear us. We pray for this parish, for our family and friends, that despite the anxiety of our times, we will live with renewed faith trust and hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all key workers, especially those looking after the sick, that they will persevere in their hard work and come to know the value of their service. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all those who are sick, especially those known to us and those suffering with COVID-19, 
that they will be strengthened and consoled. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. hear us. We pray for those who have died, that they will see Christ face to face. We pray for those who have died recently, and for those whose anniversaries occur at this time, and all those who have lost their lives in the pandemic. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. We ask for the intercession of Mary, Mother of the risen Lord, as we say, Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, the Lord, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We pray for our own intentions for a moment in silence. Heavenly Father, your Son Jesus Christ has today risen from the dead. In thankful faith, we ask you to hear all our prayers that we offer. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. So please be seated now for the offertory of the Mass. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will Come to us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God. God.
restored our life. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your praise as they are claimed. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and giving you thanks he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me Give us 
this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. Prayer of spiritual communion. By Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul, so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, therefore let us keep the feast with the unleavened bread of purity and truth. Alleluia. Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those who have nourished by this paschal sacrament one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Normally at this stage, Angela and I will be standing at the back of the church with a box of chocolates wishing you all a happy Easter. We can't do that today, but I'd like to wish you a very um, happy Easter um, wherever you are. Thank you so much for joining us, and a special thank you uh, 
to Angela for doing all those readings and performing all the ministries, um, and also uh, to the choir for providing a CD with some of the music. Um, and thanks to all of you for all your um, cards and, and best wishes and gifts, and also all those drawings of the church, which will be decorating um, the church door. May God bless you, and don't forget that tomorrow at 10.30 we have our Easter morning mass. The Lord be with you. Bow down for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast Come with Christ's help and exhorting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.